Good morning and welcome to the Daily Share where we pray the word of God and bring it to life in our lives. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. This is a very popular scripture. We all know the scripture and we we, we all like to think that we live by the scripture. Um, but as you as your walk with God um progresses you'll start to find that actually you have a lot to learn and you have a lot of disciplining um to sort of get through because you start to realize that it, what you think or what we think is relying on god is actually still relying on ourselves and so god god takes us through many different levels of learning and as you go deeper with god you start to realize that you no, know, I, I thought I knew this, but I, I clearly don't. And then you submit yourself to God and ask him to teach you it again. I want to talk about five ways in which, by which we get in our own way. Five ways by which we um, are responsible for our own lack of progress or for our own um, backwardness in the things of God, basically. Um, this scripture is basically clearly telling us that you're, you, in order to survive in this life, you're going to have to trust in God. Yes, God gave us our own will, self-will. Yes, he gave us our own brain, our own intelligence, and we can think for ourselves. But you can take that self-will and submit it back to God and uh, and rely on him. He gave us the choice. He, he, didn't, he didn't force us to, to, to trust in him. Um, he gave us the choice to choose to trust in him. And so this is why this takes a lot of training because out of habit, you just get used from a very young age. You get used to making some de decisions by ourselves. To be honest, how many parents actually say, uh, tell their children to trust in God uh, in all, with all their, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Like how many parents actually teach their children from a young age to say, remember, whatever you're doing, just listen to God, trust in God. I know some do, but very few of us do because this is a very alien concept to us. Um, so from a very young age, we get told to be independent, you know, think for yourself, learn to do things yourself, um, which, you know, to an extent, yes, there is that aspect of training a, a child to to wash himself, to wash themselves and to clean themselves and to get dressed and so on and so forth. But this dependence on God also needs to, to be taught from a very young and early age. Otherwise, we get in the habits and into the thinking. We, we easily start to think that we have to think for ourselves. And while we're allowed to, God gave us the permission. He gave us the choice to choose to just do things ourselves. It's, it doesn't give us the, the best results when we do things ourselves. So the first thing, the first way in which we get in our own way um, is by second guessing. When God, you know, sometimes God gives you a clear instruction and gives you, makes a clear indication in your heart. The, the, the book of Job talks about that whisper in your heart. When God whispers in your heart while you're sleeping at night, you, you just know that th this this was communicated to me. Sometimes you even forget the dream, but you just have this one impression that was made in your heart, that was made to your subconscious to do something or to think a certain way or to start doing things a certain way. And you know that God, you want me to do this. You came in agreement with God in your dream but you may wake up and forget that dream but you can still remember that this impression was made on you and then afterwards later on for example I always use the example of prayer and fasting because fasting is one of the disciplines of you know by which we can you know walk with God I'm not talking about being fasted permanently but a regular um a frequent or a consistent pattern of fasting even when there's no need to just sub you, you get into a pattern of submitting or a rhythm of submitting yourself to god on a consistent basis um and and god makes this impression in your heart and god says right I, you know I, I want you to make this fasting this prayer and fasting thing a serious part of your life and you agree with god in that dream and you may even work out how you're going to do it and god will make an impression on you you'll have this burden in your heart you know if you say oh i'm going to fast one day a week and perhaps the situations that god wants you to fast about they require more than that because god knows we don't know right we don't know what we're praying about the bible talks about how we don't know what we're we're praying for or, or, or how to pray sometimes and God will make the and you'll just feel in your heart that no it can't just be one day I'm going to have to give two days per week right and then you start off on this thing you might even decide that in fact instead of spacing these days out I want them to be two continuous days per week okay and you set off on this journey by the end of day one you're starting to second guess that decision to say what was I even thinking did God even 
you know, tell me to do this. No, it was just my silly mind telling me to do that. Here's the thing, guys. The Bible says all good things come from the Lord. Those good instructions. Your body is flesh. Flesh wants what it wants. Your flesh is not going to give you any good advice. I'll tell you that now. Um, your flesh has all these, it lusts after its own desires. Your spirit, on the other hand, is in tune with God. And that's where the instructions from God come in. So when you get such good instructions like, pray two days a week, or sorry, fast two days a week, or, uh, you know, do something or maybe give so-and-so some money or go and buy so-and-so some groceries. Those instructions are of God. You can see how good and noble those instructions are. They're not going to come. They're certainly not going to come from the kingdom of darkness. They're going to come from God. All good things come from the Lord. Anytime you have a, an impression to do something good, it's from the Lord. It's an instruction from God. And so when you start second guessing it, that, that's when you get in the way. God whispered to you some very good advice and some very good instructions on what to do going forward. And you start second guessing. So now you've decided to fast two days. By the end of the second day, in fact, you don't even finish the second day. By the time you get to six o'clock in the evening, you'll say, oh, forget this. It's actually six o'clock. Let's just say I've fasted 6 a.m. till 6 p.m. So now you're second guessing. Um, you start to think that, no, that wasn't from God. That was just my own silly thinking. No, you know, if you want to see how, what your thinking can be like, look at all the ideas that you've come up with on your own. Have any of them been any good that were outside of God? No, that's how bad decisions come. Bad decisions come from our own understanding, from our own thinking, because our own understanding is limited. And the understanding of God is um, sovereign. God is sovereign. He sees all at the, at, all in one go. He sees it all. And then the second way by which we get into in, in our own way is by just being anxious. We make decisions out of anxiety. You get some money and all of a sudden you can't sit still. All of a sudden you can't think straight. You're like, oh my gosh, I have to do something with this money. Just steady yourself. And think straight and submit to God and ask God for clear, calm instructions. When God talks to you, there won't be any form of anxiety. When God talks to you, it's very peaceful and very calm and very serene. That's who God is. He doesn't have, he's not the author of confusion. When he talks to you, he's not going to get you all anxious and running around and feeling anxious. You don't even know what to do anymore. Before you know it, you've run around the entire town and completely blown that money. You've wasted that money. You haven't done anything sensible with it because you didn't give yourself time to, to talk to God and think clearly and process yourself. And don't think this only applies to big amounts of money. Sometimes we waste even small amounts of money, but that's how the enemy steals from us. When you waste a small amount of money here today and another small amount tomorrow, another small amount, by the end of the week, you've wasted a lot of money. You've bought things. You, you look at and think, why did I even buy this? Right? That's being anxious. When the Bible says be anxious for nothing, you have to maintain a very peaceful and serene state. Don't do anything out of anxiety. And then the third way is by doubting. You start to, you know... Again, it is very similar to the first one where you're second guessing. You are doubting the word of God. You are doubting that you can do. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You start doubting your own ability. But then that should remind you of the scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. You start to think that, uh, I remember especially last year when I used to do, um, you know, very frequent prayer and fasting. I've got back to that now, but for a good number of months, I, I couldn't quite find my pattern again. Anyway, when I, when I, last year, I used to, I, I used to fast so many days per, per month, right? And I remember sometimes this thought would come to me and say, well, you do realize that your body is going to start to get sick because you're doing all this fasting. And literally, and then I started to be anxious about that. And I started to say, God, am I going to, you start doubting yourself and saying, oh, is this really good for me? Is all this fasting good for me? What am I doing to my body by all this fasting? Don't, don't make that mistake. And that does this actually talking me, taking me to the fourth point, which is talking to other people. When you and God made a decision in private it, at night, in your dreams, in the privacy of your dreams, you then go and start asking other people, oh, do you think it's good if I fast so many times? Do you think it's going to be any good if I, if I fast two days a week? Will that not damage my body? Will that not hurt my stomach? Will that... You went, that person wasn't there. No disrespect to that person. With all due respect, God spoke to you directly. And now you're asking other people about what God told you. You're, you're, you're doubting that your, your, your body can even handle this. God created your body. He knows what your body can handle. He knows what you can handle. 
you know, the human body can fast for 40 days. You can go 40 days with no food. Yes, you may have to drink water, but you can go 40 days with no food. It's been proven. Most people, you tell them that, go 40 days with no food, they'll curse you. They'll tell you it's not possible, you'll die. They'll tell you, oh, you couldn't have done that. You didn't do 40 days with no food. You would have died. And and you, again, this is something I experienced where someone said, no, you, you couldn't have done that. I said, well, clearly I did because I'm here. I'm alive. I didn't die. Right. So don't go asking people about what God told you that they have no business. You, have, you know, those people don't know anything that was between you and God. And once you start doubting and second guessing that again, that's coming back to that thing of second guessing God's instructions. It's not it, it really it brings disruption to your life. Again, I'm speaking from experience. Right. And then the final one, number five, um, don't be carnally minded. You uh, know, being carnally minded, the Bible says to be carnally minded is death. When you are, when you, for example, again, let's go back to the uh, example of fasting. So you, there you are, you, God told you to fast 21 days, you get to 10 days, or maybe even not even 10 days, by 10 days, your body is clear. But the truth is between days one to six in particular, your body is going through changes um, and, you know, and your digestion system is, is starting to realize there's no food coming in, right? Um, but you're starting to release gases. And so we all know that a person who hasn't eaten, you know, they has, has bad breath, you know, when you're not eating, it gives you bad breath, right? Your, your breath doesn't smell great. And so then you get among some people and you start to realize that, oh, no, my breath is not right. Yes, you can, you can, you, you can drink a lot of water to help with your breath. You can, uh, some people advise things like um, fennel tea. Just put fennel seeds in water and drink that water. It'll freshen your breath. There's all sorts of things you can do to freshen your breath, right? But no, you don't think that way. In that moment, you're, start to, you're, starting, you're starting to go by what's happening in the physical realm. Just because you realize that you have bad breath, you start to doubt that you should do this praying and fasting. No, don't. You are going to miss out on God's blessings if you go by what you see in the physical realm. The reason you need to fast is because of these problems in the physical realm in the first place. All these challenges, all these sicknesses in your body, all these dysfunctions in your body that are, that are causing your body to not behave the right way. That's why you need to fast. So you can't let your body then tell you that, no, you need to stop this fasting. You need to go and eat something. No, you don't. No, you don't. Stay the course. And so what if your breath is bad compared to the blessings that are coming? Trust me, that 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 bad breath is nothing compared to the big blessings that are coming. So it's just it's a sacrifice. Just make that sacrifice. Do your best. Obviously, maintain your hygiene. Do your best to keep yourself as fresh as possible and stand, you know, keep your eyes focused on Jesus. The Bible says looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He gave you that instruction to go on prayer and fasting. See that through with him. Don't start talking to other people. Don't start looking at the physical things happening around you because yes, prayer and fasting does cause things to start going crazy. Uh, you may see things breaking in your house. You may see all sorts of things. Just remind you of the word of God. Remind yourself of the word of God. The Bible says um, that the gracious hand of the Lord rests upon those who seek him. In your time of seeking God, you can ask God for anything. You can ask him. His hand is on you. He's resting on you. Ask him and say, Father, I ask you to stop all this. Every demon that is coming against me in this prayer and fasting, I ask you to stop them. I want to see this prayer and fasting through and I don't want any disruption. I, don't, I want my body to be silent, to be still. You can ask God. You can, you know, Joshua asked for the son to stop so you could stop fighting you are also in war prayer and fasting is spiritual warfare so you can ask for ask god for anything just ask for the supernatural to happen just so you can see this prayer and fasting through god will do that for you he's no respecter of persons thank you for listening god bless you have a lovely day goodbye